the motivation for me it just comes and goes i feel like the reason why i've been um i've seen the most progress or i've seen progress throughout the years is just maintaining consistency Yo Gorillas, welcome to the Athlete Insider Podcast by Gorilla Nation. My name is Phil and today's guest is Tayo from Abnormal Beings, a YouTuber, athlete with over 230,000 subscribers on YouTube, somebody who shares calisthenics advice and challenges on his YouTube and Instagram, of course. I'm really happy to welcome you to the show. Tayo, welcome. Welcome, Philip. I appreciate you having me on this. Uh, it's been a pleasure. So yeah, looking forward to this and hopefully I can answer each and every one of your questions, man. Yeah, I'm also really looking forward to the interview. Um, it was quite spontaneous that we did this interview, like a really mm. short-term uh, decision, which is uh, which I like. And uh, yeah, mm. like uh, we wrote a few days ago on Instagram, yeah, uh, tell you would you be would you be up for for an interview? And I said, yeah, that's uh, that's perfect. Uh, like uh, you would be the perfect guest. And uh, yeah, now you are here. Thanks a lot for accepting the invitation and uh, for sharing some some of your some of your workout advice about your life life etc mm -hmm. yeah no worries hey, i appreciate you having me on this and yeah like i said hopefully i can you know help people with any questions they have or whatever and just share my own experience so yeah looking forward to it bro awesome let's kick off with the hard facts um how how tall are you how heavy are you <laughs> yes the metrics all right so <laughs> i'm one seven six centimeters so that's like five foot nine and i weigh currently 75 kilos so i'm not sure how much that is in pounds Mm -hmm. but 75 i can search now actually um you said 167 yeah. or 176 centimeters 176 176, 176. okay so, so quite heavy for your uh for your height yeah fairly i mean I, f i feel like uh i'm comfortable at this weight like i can maintain it well so like yeah 75 is like my current current weight um let me see that in pounds uh in lbs is 165 pounds so mm -hmm. yeah That's okay That's from metrics. <laughs> and uh, how old are you? I'm 26 years old. So okay. yeah, I know baby face, but no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Great. a bit older, man. I'm a bit older. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Do you want to start? Um, yeah, by presenting yourself and also how you got into touch with with the sport with calisthenics. Yeah, for sure. So um, I've been training for almost like it's coming up to 10 years now. So nine, 10 years. So I started when I was like 16 years old. Um, literally started calisthenics mainly because of like football for soccer. Because um, I used to play a lot of football back in the day and um, played at like a semi-pro level. And like, I wanted to kind of push for professional. And like a lot of my friends were, were like playing professional football or in academies and stuff. So it kind of like motivated me to like make it as a pro. So one of the main things I needed to, to do was like look bigger on the pitch and get stronger. And like back in the day, nine, 10 years ago, I was a proper skinny kid. Like I was a, a lot, yeah, a lot less heavier than I am now. So I didn't really look strong on the pitch and I, I needed to change that. And uh, I did a bit of research and I came across like um, calisthenics just through like YouTube videos. So I saw the likes of Bar Stars, Hannibal for King, Zeph, like all these OG guys that are amazing at calisthenics. And I was like, you know what? I want to do this. Like obviously your core is going to get stronger. So it's going to help on the pitch. But also, like, you can learn all these crazy skills. So I was just more drawn towards that versus, like, kind of the gym, if that makes sense. Um, I did still lift weights as well. Like, I have, I've always lifted weights throughout my whole life as well, more so for legs. But, again, just calisthenics took my main attention and focus. And then, yeah, just been been training since then. So, wow. It's been a while. <laughs> That's really interesting. What what position did you play in uh, in football, in soccer? I, yeah, I was, so I was a left back, left wing. So yeah, okay. I was running down the line. <laughs> okay. Reason. And you're you're uh, like good in sprinting. You're you can run quickly. Yeah. So um, I did like a lot of athletics training as well in school and stuff. So it was like um, I do enjoy like kind of the athletic side of training as well. So yeah, re really enjoy sprinting and jumping and all of those things as well. Nice. And uh, the, so the main motivation for you to start with, with calisthenics was uh, at first the, the physique or like the strength, not physique, the strength um, aspect. So to have like a better um, upper body strength um, in, in, I don't know, uh, in battles. How is it called? Like in uh, one of yeah. the ones. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, literally like, again, exactly like that. So on the pitch, you just to have like a stronger core and, and um, uh, just better balance and like, I guess, Uh, physique wise it was kind of physique as well because like 
teams look at you and they judge you by your appearance as well. So you, you need to look the part, if that makes sense as well. Yeah. So, yeah, definitely. But you have said that the motivation was also the skills. So uh, yeah, 100%. What, what what skills uh, did did uh, like were the most attractive for you? I think the most attractive, obviously, like, you know, the human flag. I think everyone, when they first see it, they're like, oh, my God, this is crazy. <laughs> it's like the best thing. And, uh, <laughs> and then when you actually dig deep into calisthenics, you realize, oh, okay, it's, it's, it's a tough skill to achieve, but there are harder things out there, in my opinion, personally, like, you know, the planche or iron cross or something like that. So, it's, you know, it's, um, yeah, I think though that move and muscle-ups as well, I think as a kid, you just want to, like, you know, throw yourself over the bar. I think those two are like, I was like drawn to you at the start. I was just amazed with everything really, to be honest. So. <laughs> nice. Yeah. But it's true. Like the, the human flag always, when, when I have to explain the, the sport to a pe person who's not uh, into calisthenics, it's always, exactly. do you know this? You know, like when yeah, somebody is, you know the flag, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know the flag or do you know bus can you muscle up and i'm like ah. if only they knew it's like you do a planche and everyone's like ah this is whatever yeah, <laughs> it's yeah and that's the craziest thing about calisthenics because of, like i know it from a lot of shows and presentations often a straddle planche for like somebody who is not into calisthenics looks much mm -hmm. better than a full planche like from the front you know so exactly and there are moves like dragon press i think it's called on on the floor like uh, that look like from aesthetics that look completely ugly and but it, they yeah. are so hard you know like um... exactly exactly <laughs> i think you only start to appreciate like the how hard certain skills are when you actually do them or practice them whereas the average person if they see it they're gonna think you know a handstand is amazing as well or something like that <laughs> yeah. so like yeah yeah or back lever looks more uh, it, impressive than a front lever but uh exactly yeah, yeah exactly so Interesting. So, um, yeah, tell us more. How did you start to work out? How was your uh, beginning? Were you already a pro? Like, did you do, uh, achieve your muscle up in the second uh, workout or how, <laughs> yeah. how did it go? Yeah. So funnily enough, so literally I, c I couldn't do like a, a single pull up. So I, I had like very minimal strength, but I think I could do maybe like one, one or two, like at the start. I didn't, I tried to do one from behind. I couldn't do this at all. So I like all my friends were like, not laugh at me, but you know what I mean? Make jokes. And I was like, watch, watch, like I'm going to get, <laughs> so it kind of like motivated me to like, you know, get stronger and, and better at it. And so at the start I was, I still was mixing kind of gym. So again, you got like the basic kind of bodybuilding routine. Like you would do like, you know, your four sets of eight to 12, obviously, you know, increase the volume over time, progressively overload, use like the lat pull down machine as well, a little bit rows stuff like that i i did do that as well at the start i can't lie so i i've always been mixing weights and calisthenics but i was more drawn to the calisthenics side of it so you i would usually probably at the beginning start with like training like four to five times a week and then i'll do my sessions would be like an hour or two long and then there would be again mainly like if i was to go to the park and do like circuit style so i'll do like a, a bunch of pull-ups with the band or something or then dips or rows or you know australian pull-ups just kind of a basic circuit routine. And then as I got kind of stronger, I would start to do more like sets and reps style and like increase the volume. So I'll do like maybe things on like four sets of a certain exercise or five sets and then start to like do more research on how to make the exercises harder. And that's when you start to learn about the muscle ups and, and the back lever and stuff. So you train, you know, the tuck back lever holds, you know, I did a lot of those, um, l sit chin ups, all of these kind of other exercises. And I think it literally just, kind of that shifted towards more the calisthenic side of training and then yeah just been doing that throughout the summer and I think I learned maybe my first skill I learned was the L-sit I think the L-sit or like you know the pullover eventually the muscle up stuff like that so yeah just kind of and I think the book that helped me as well I bought a book called Overcoming Gravity mm -hmm. so that was a really good book like as a base introduction to calisthenics and like kind of opened my my eyes as to how to kind of structure a calisthenics workout so I highly recommend that book to anyone that wants to start. And again, there's so much more information now online on YouTube. Like you've got, you've got my channel, you've got Phoenix, you've got Barca, you've got so many different calisthenics channels that you can pick and pull like pieces of information, valuable info from fitness FAQs. You know, there's so many amazing athletes, uh, calisthenics movement, you know, there's, there's loads of people. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's how I started really.
True. So we'll put the the book in the description. Like uh, it yeah. gets recommended a lot of times in this uh, in in this podcast. So um, yeah, definitely worth reading. It's a mm -hmm. big thing. It's a big book. Um, yeah, chunky. But, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, it like it's it's meant for this for the committed ones, I guess. Uh, so mm -hmm. it's not something if you're like uh, doing calisthenics a little bit every two or three weeks. Um, but it's something for really for the committed people. Exactly. Exactly. Um, yeah, but um, you said uh, throughout the summer you did your uh, basics, etc. So a common mm -hmm. question from the community is always: for how long did you only do basics in the beginning? Yeah, that's good. That's true. Um, so I'll say actually, it wasn't that long. Like I spent maybe about a solid month or two just like drilling home the basics, and then when I started to get like comfortable with pull ups. So when I say comfortable, I could like maybe do like eight to ten clean reps of, of pull ups in a single set, something like that. Um, that's when I started to like um, switch it up, if that makes sense. So I didn't spend too long on the basics, if that makes sense. Um, I, I then kind of, again, using overcoming gravity or like other pieces of information, I would make, I would like start to train for certain skills. So like the back lever, for example. So like I would do a lot of supinated grip tuck holds um, or skin the cats, you know, German hangs, those kind of exercises um, with like l sit chin ups or like, you know what I mean? Just switching it up with kind of, um, harder exercises that's going to kind of involve multiple muscle groups if mm -hmm. that makes sense that's a, a bit more intense so I would say that like kind of two months down the line that's when I started to really kind of get a bit more creative with the workouts and then kind of structure them towards certain skills so again I'll do like pull push splits so like again probably train pull twice a week and push twice a week if that makes sense and maybe mm -hmm. do like a day a leg day in the gym so I was like training five days a week And again, obviously, because I was younger, I could afford to do that. And like, you know, I mean, I wasn't really, you know, I wasn't thinking of like warm ups or whatever or mobility work. I was just like straight in it, smash, you know what I mean? And then um, down later down the line, as I get more advanced, I start to realize, oh, mobility plays a big factor in learning certain skills, i.e. the handstand or again, back lever, you need relatively good shoulder extension, you know, certain things. You just need, your body needs to be um, moving in a certain way to like do certain movements pain-free and then I didn't take that into account in my younger years so I highly recommend to people if you're starting calisthenics as well to like get into the mobility side of it as well from early on so again one it avoids injuries and two it's going to progress your training a lot quicker if that makes sense you're, you're going to see a lot more fast progress so okay yeah true definitely um also working on this uh, the split right now like uh, uh, hip mobility for the straddle planche stuff like this nice. uh, exactly you, exactly you also get uh, like i think you get a lot of pain af uh, if you don't like it's easy to start from the beginning on to just do like uh, five to ten minutes in front of every workout uh, yeah. and it pays off later um learning more advanced skills yeah 100 percent. just a little bit it doesn't have to be like a full full-on like mobility workout literally just do couple of five ten minutes before you work out or whatever and it those kind of sessions add up in in the end so yeah okay so um from the basics from the two months i think i think you said uh, of basics uh, you went into skills um mm -hmm. so uh, like doing more statics um more holes yeah. more um, mm -hmm. specific exercise and progressions for the skills mm -hmm. um And you built your program yourself with the book, with um, like mostly overcoming gravity, but uh, like content that you found online. Yeah. And also um, a shout out to, so like I used to train in like these London parks, um, one being Primrose Hill, that was probably like one of the first parks I went to. So it's like a popular park in London. It's not the greatest facility wise now, because you've got the kangaroo parks that are popping up everywhere in London, which is great. Wow. But um, yeah, they've got, um, so loads of people around you just learn from other people as well so like there was a proper couple of older guys that i would like ask help for or like you know what i mean i'll just pull pieces of information from everyone like i was never shy to to ask for help so i think that really helped if that makes sense so yeah i can imagine that's also maybe directly a hint that uh, you can give to the people and advice is uh, to not be shy to ask for help and for advice to yeah. somebody who is more experienced and in exactly. some fields Trust me, because like, I'm forever learning myself as well. Like, I'm never like, you know, I wouldn't say I've mastered any, everything. Like, you, I'm just always learning. So I'm, I'm always open to, you know, experiencing new things. So if you've got something that's good and works certain thing, let me try it. Like, I'm down yeah. to, you know what I mean, <laughs> to try it out and see what, 
see how it affects my body. So yeah, just don't be shy to ask for help. Awesome. Today, your um, yeah, you mastered uh, some some uh, really advanced skills. Uh, I think I saw your uh, your full plan planche uh, video like um, a few weeks yeah. month ago. So um, yeah, maybe um, how long did it take f take you to learn the, the yeah. planche? Uh, maybe first straddle planche from mm -hmm. the first workout ever. Like um, that's always what yeah. the people ask from the first workout ever to the first uh, clean straddle planche hold. Yeah. See, that's the thing. It's, it's always hard to kind of give a, a good, you know what I mean, time range. It's, it's very hard. Like, I want to say it took me fast, but I can't lie. I, I, my training for the planche was, again, lack of experience and knowledge before. It, it wasn't, it, the progress was slow, for example. So um, I was strong in certain areas, weak in certain areas. Um, I started training probably, I think, properly for the planche, maybe like a year or a year and a half into calisthenics training. So like, I, w I mean, I would do like tuck planche and stuff like that a couple of times, if that makes sense. But like seriously kind of training for the straddle and stuff like that, I would say maybe like a year in, or a year and a half into my training. And then it took me about, I would say maybe like another another year to kind of properly hold a, like a, a straddle planche, if that makes sense. So in total, I would say maybe like a year or two, if that makes sense. And then again, over the years, it kind of just got cleaner and cleaner. But the problem is, again, because I was gaining weight, building muscle size, you know what I mean? I would have to, my relative strength would have to keep matching up. So the progress was quite slow, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And again, my training for it wasn't the greatest. So it took me quite a long time to kind of achieve it. But I would say like a, a year or two for the straddle, if that makes sense. And then for the full planche, like that was again, slow, slow progress. And again, maybe because of genetics or whatnot, you know, the way my body's morphed, but I feel like I'm, I'm not too um, placed at a disadvantage. So a lot of people, depending on where your weight's kind of distributed in your body. So if you're someone that naturally has bigger legs or like, you know, I mean, carries a lot more mass on your legs, you're going to find the planche a lot harder, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So it's like, luckily I don't feel like I have the biggest legs. Like they're, they're strong and like, you know what I mean, toned, but I don't carry that extra excessive weight that's going to, or I'm not exactly, I'm not like, you know, 180 or plus. So it's, I feel like the progress for me was a bit faster, if that makes sense. It was still kind of slow because I know people that are a lot, a lot shorter as well that learned planche in like a couple of months. So it's, it's just, there's so many factors at play, but I would say like a year or two. So, yeah. Okay. And uh, front lever. Oh, front lever, um, I would say it took me about uh, a year, a year, I would say. So again, like, uh, again, it just over the years, it just gets cleaner and stronger. And because you've practiced that movement so many times, your body just gets better at, you know what I mean? Just firing the muscles and just being able to hold it. So um, yeah, about a year. And again, it's probably like a two, three second hold by then. And then again, just over the years, it gets stronger and stronger and stronger. And again, obviously, as you gain weight, gain size, you know, it's you kind of like try and maintain that level of strength with your skills, providing you practice it. So I wouldn't say I saw some crazy progress, but literally that's that's how it is. Like, it's going to take long. Like people realize you, you're not going to just get a front lever like that. You still have to put in time and, and work for it. So and again, that's a, it's a that front lever is a funny one because a lot of people, some people find it harder than the planche. Some people find it so easy. It's easier than back lever. So it's like. It's, it's such a weird skill, you know, everyone's different. Though Again, the way your morphology is set up, the way your body's like composed plays a big factor. But I, I do say one thing for front lever, I would say if you can like build thick lats, like really, really big lats, you know, build up your pulling strength, it's going to help better your chances of holding a front lever because essentially that's what you're doing. You're placing yourself in like shoulder extension and your, your lats are the main movers when you, when you hold a front lever. For me, I feel it mostly in my lats and my triceps when I hold the front lever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's also really interesting because a few years ago when I started, I thought the triceps was only for pushing movements. Um, but yeah. then when you do like a lot of rowing and uh, front lever practice, you feel that uh, really in the back of your triceps, you have like extreme uh, muscle pain after the front lever. Yeah, exactly. Because you're like literally, you're, you're pulling. So you're still engaging your muscles, you're literally full body tension. So you need, you need like everywhere to be strong, really. Like all these schools, you need to be strong in everywhere. But um, that's why the basis is so important. You want to have a strong foundation. But I do feel for the front lever, if you have like a decent kind of 
if you can do like weight pulls with a decent amount of stretch weight on you, you you're gonna better your chances to be able to do do one if that makes sense. Because mm-hmm. um, you need strong strong lats to hold it on you. So, yeah. Yeah. Switching to today, uh, how does your workout schedule look like today? Uh, in um, yeah, in 2021, uh, in in May, yeah. no, no June, <laughs> June. It's 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 yesterday, June. Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, feel free to um, to present it also as detailed as as you want, and um, because people are always interested in like the the split per day, like the intensity you work on in the rep range, like all yeah. this stuff. For sure. So like for now, I would say, again, it's, it's changed up a lot from when I started before. It was like one, two hour sessions, you know, beast mode, volume, 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 smashing it. No mobility work, no warm up, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Whereas now it's like a bit more kind of like um, structure to it. So I would, I would usually do my skill work first and then I'll do like kind of like more sets and reps based style of work. So for when I say skill work, I would train for a static move. So like my current split is like pull, push, legs, um, uh, pull, push on one day and then legs again. So I'm training legs twice a week because I want to beef up my legs, you know. My, my main focus now, I want to get my legs stronger. And, and, and yeah, I've been really enjoying, you know, weighted leg training now. So I've been, been doing a lot more of that. But yeah, I would, I would always do kind of my skill work on, on one of those days. And I would spend about 20, 30 minutes. So right now I'm, I'm working towards the one I'm handstand. So like I would do um, sets of that at the start of my workout. Um, as like, again, it's a good warm up and just to practice, you know, obviously I do my wrist mobility work or whatnot for like a couple of minutes. Then I would get into like my, my sets on each side and yeah, just play around with it really. And then just practice the holds. So like on currently on like one finger and stuff and then just kind of slowly letting go. And then just trying to do that each side for about 20 minutes again just practice and then once i've done that i would do let's say if it's a um a push push day then i'll go to like i don't know um weighted dips for example then into like maybe some some form of push-ups or like um pipe push-ups on the rings anything like that so just volume on like any push exercises and then again my workout wouldn't be too long so i'm because i'm training more frequently i would say a max will be like 60 to 90 minutes each workout so that's how i I would do it just again because right now i'm just trying to again maintain my current physique i'm not really trying to you know um obviously the the main goal for me is just get stronger so i'm not trying to like it's not hypertrophy is the goal so yeah just trying to keep the volume the same but obviously try and push when i can uh, and be smart about and not injure myself and then again um the other skill i'm working towards is kind of the planche so I do like, again, on pool days, I'll still do my, like a, a pushing skill, the planche, because those are my main, two main focus. So I always tend to pick two skills to work on. Usually I would, I'll do like a, a pull sk- pulling skill, but like I'm comfortable with my front lever, my, you know, back lever. Um, so it's like, yeah, I'm, I don't, it's, that's not the main focus. Main focus is planche on one arm handstand. So I always practice that before my workouts for like 20 minutes. And then I would have like a 60 to 90 minute session where I do like a lot more sets of reps. Work. So whether it be like weighted pull-ups, weighted chin-ups, weighted dips, wherever, depending if it's a push-up all day. So that's how usually I structure it. And then in terms of mobility and stuff, so every evening I do a lot of passive stretching. So that's more relaxed. I just chill, you know, lay in stretches, maybe slap on something on the TV to watch to or listen to a podcast or something just for like 20 minutes, you know, before I go to bed. And then um, I might even do in my workouts or like um, just after my skills, I might do a little bit of mobility work. So I still kind of do sets and reps style of it. So it's more like active stretching or like loaded stretching. So I'd use a weight, for example, let's say for my hamstrings, I'll do like maybe stiff leg deadlifts or Jefferson curls, something like that. You know what I mean? That's going to improve that. So just depending on what my goals is really, I'll factor in certain bits here and there. But that's how I kind of maintain my, my level of mobility as well, just by doing daily daily things, little small things that add up in the long run. So a bit of a long answer, but <laughs> yeah. It's cool. Train four or five times a week, you know, skills first, then more, you know, sets of rep style of work in the middle. That's it really, yeah. Nice. And I always see like um, there are two kinds of people. I want to say the the ones uh, there are um, the the ones who are like having a lot of accessory uh, exercises mm-hmm. in in their workouts and uh, like doing uh, really 
exercises also for small muscle groups and mm -hmm. um and then there are the other people who are just doing their pull-ups chin-ups dips uh push-ups yeah. and that's it like um for, uh, like really only the basic uh, movements mm -hmm. what uh, what do you think of of this um i can't lie i like to keep it simple just because like it's a like for example i do a lot of weighted weighted calisthenics so for, for me i feel like that's the a good way to build strength and you can again progressively overload like smartly like you can increase the weight in small increments over the weeks so for me i like to keep it simple i'll do a lot of like weird chin-ups weird pulls stuff like that weird dips um and then again bodyweight exercises so again if i one arm kind of assisted pulls as well great exercise or like rows I, I tend to keep tuck rows again i tend to keep it very simple i don't do any cra like crazy fancy exercises or like accessory work as such mainly a lot of compound heavy lifts and again i might do some again some some rows or just exercises that are a bit easier that you can go for a couple more reps so Yeah, I'm more of the simple guy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And um, yeah, also we received some questions about your PRs in weighted. Um, do you yeah. want to share some for dips, for pull-ups, maybe also muscle-up? Um, I haven't haven't checked my new PRs now. I assume they've gone up um, for, for a lot of things, actually, but I need to retest. But the last time I tested, I think, was about a year and a half ago. And it was... Uh, a 75 kg dip i think which isn't that amazing i think it's, it's all right and then i got um a weighted a weighted chin up of 70 kilos i think wow One yeah i'm They quite so close together <laughs> yeah yeah so wow. literally i'm so um my my um chin up's very strong but i've been practicing that so i think ch for me chin up is found good um for squat it was one 120 but I, i know that's increased now because i've been working my legs i think it's i think it's more like 140 now because i've i've been really going hard on on squats um so yeah uh deadlift uh, my deadlifts are quite strong uh the last i did one uh 180 uh comfortably i tried 200 i failed at 200 but i need to like retest again soon so those are my, my prs yeah. wow That's uh, interesting, the 70 yeah. kg uh, chin up chin and up, the yeah. 75 kg dip. That's uh, yeah, no. <laughs> unusual that they are so close together. Yeah, honestly, like my dip, you know what it is? It's like my dips as well. I'm very, I'm very scared to go heavy, heavy on them, if that makes sense. Like I feel like, because I've kind of like, I've, I've had a shoulder injury in the past. So I've got to be careful with, with certain weighted. That's why I never, I rarely test my, my PR because I don't want to, snap anything <laughs> yeah but but yeah when i did test it was 75 dip and then uh 70 chin so yeah and that's the good thing about like doing um i don't know lighter sessions in general you just know that you're progressing you know that the numbers are rising but um yeah. you you don't have to test uh them all the time because the pr is always like a big stress for the, your body and hundred uh, percent I think like people re need to realize as well that you there's a, I know there's a, amazing street lifters out there that lift some crazy weight, but they also they themselves train smart. They're not lifting that weight like every time for the gram. If if that if that makes sense, they they have a structure to their training. So don't feel like you have to push like your maximum on every session because in the long run it's going to lead to CNS fatigue and just injury. So you you don't want that. Just like you know work at a good working set you know 60 70 percent rpe or something depending on, on how you want to structure your program or whatnot and then have weeks where you push and then weeks where you you regress and like you know take it easy and i feel that way your 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 strength's gonna accelerate and fly so yeah that's true because if you see like a, a smart training program from a coach or something you mm -hmm. always see the that the weeks are like building up um and uh, then there is somewhere the peak Uh, like I'm not too much into it, but uh, like after yeah. some rest or like uh, after loading, I don't know how you call it, but uh, yeah, then yeah. There, one day there's the PR and exactly you could yeah. now already plan that the PR is in six weeks and my PR attempt is in six weeks and not in two weeks when somebody says, hey, yeah, let's let's try out something and uh, trust yeah. me, yeah, man. Because I've had that before where people are like, oh, let's just let's go hard, like 100%. I'm like, oh, no, I shouldn't. And then if I do, I might injure myself or something. I'm like, oh, I should have done it. <laughs> yeah. But I feel like the main thing is you just enjoy it and the strength will come and just, just enjoy it. So, yeah. And it always depends, like, 
in of your goals it really depends uh what what are your goals if you're like not if you don't have the the performance uh 100 performance aspect in your training uh, mm -hmm. you can do your prs you can just just train for fun you should take care uh of like of your joints because joints are something and injuries that uh that are like that can really throw you back but yeah um, as you said it, um, it it's yeah it depends a little bit do you want to go the really performance thing like performance mm -hmm. way or do you want to go the fun way but the fun way will always not have the same results as the performance way exactly. because it it um, yeah yeah it's not that yeah. well planned trust me yeah I think like you like you said you need to have a clear idea on what your goals is and you've got to understand as well certain goals might be um you know i mean not the same as or counterintuitive to your another goal that you have so a lot of people have two different goals that are like opposing so you have to kind of make sacrifices and prioritize or focus one versus the other so i feel like a lot of people need to understand that as well if that makes mm -hmm. sense do so, yeah. your pl planche and one arm handstand do they um go against each other or um, not too much, not too much. I don't think so. Cause like, again, this, I don't train, I don't overtrain the skill. Like how I train skills, I usually like to get a lot of practice of that skill. So frequency for me is, is everything. So I'd rather do lighter, more frequent sessions than let's say one or two heavy sessions of that specific skill, because it's not enough practice for me. Like I need to be to how I've seen like the best progress of all my skills is literally just through repetition, practice, practice, practice. So so the more I practice, the better I feel, you know, at it. And I feel like it hasn't been too opposing with the one-arm hands and the planche because um, I still maintain like a level of pulling during the week, like through my, my pulling sessions, if that makes sense. So I, I don't feel like imbalanced in any way or I don't feel like it's as taxing. So I'm at a level of strength now where it won't drain me to do 20 minutes of one arm handstand training on my shoulders. If that makes sense. Like I know my shoulders are strong enough and have enough endurance to that. That's a comfortable amount of stress and it won't fatigue my workout or it won't like, you know what I mean? Make my workout shit. If that makes sense. So mm -hmm. kind of my bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So. And it's uh, something that you did on purpose to just select two um, main goals because uh, three, five, something they would they would that would be too much yeah honestly like the, the worst thing I, I think you can do is like just do one thing here one thing there trying to master everything at once is it's not going to work you need to pick so you need to pick and choose and you need to pick and choose the right ones at your level of strength because a lot of people they may be like a total beginner but they're like oh, i want to learn planche i'm like bro you're not ready for that you need to first learn the l sit or the tuck planche or something like that you know what i mean do something that's kind of relative to your strength so um train for that first once you master it, move on to the next thing, move on to the next thing. And again, if you maintain a certain level of strength and you still kind of practice it every now and then, you're going to maintain that skill, if that makes sense. That's how I see it anyway. Do you ever have these moments where you lose motivation, where um, you have like a lack of progress and uh, you, you just lose motivation? Oh, for sure, man. All the time. Like, a lot of people feel like I'm just 100% motivated 24-7. I was like, nah, that's, that's not the case, man. Like, it, the motivation for me it just comes and goes i feel like the reason why i've been um i've seen the most progress or i've seen progress throughout the years is just maintaining consistency so again trying to stay consistent like even if i'm not like feeling if i'm feeling low or like you know i mean i, I don't really want to push or whatever i'm just tired i still get it done but i just won't give it my all you know i'll just go through the motion so don't feel like you have to push like a beast on every like, session like you're not you're never going to be fully motivated to train all the time it's even sometimes i'm like oh you know what today i'm not feeling it i'm just gonna rest you know so for me i feel like in the long run you're gonna see you're gonna be a bit more consistent if you just kind of listen to yourself and like um you don't force your just you, you kind of force yourself in a way to like just do what you can but don't feel like you know you have to be beast mode 100 percent. and on the days that you lack motivation maybe just do like a light session do something that or just do a little something at least and um that way you're still getting it done but you, and you're not just like doing nothing at all. So that's how I deal with motivation. That's like, it, I'm never at hundred percent motivation mode, honestly. Like, so yeah, I'll say just try, do what you can. And then, yeah, if you, if you're really, really not feeling it that day, then just rest, man. That's, that's how I, I'm very more la much laid back with my approach to my trainer. So, yeah. Oh, 
Yeah, it's. I think it's important to know that uh, not everybody who seems motivated on social media, because you only mostly only see the the bright side um, from exactly. somebody's workouts. Um, and uh, yeah, it's uh, good to know that also somebody who is like who seems really uh, passionate and uh, motivated uh, also has this moment. Yeah, for sure. Like for for me as well, I was gonna say, um, like I've had, I've suffered so many, like a couple injuries. I wouldn't say so many, but like one serious injury in the past. So I tore like my left labrum and my shoulder. So that was like a serious injury. And it, it like kind of annoyed me for like a, a good couple of years. And I had to be kind of very smart when I was training. So that really demotivated me. Um, like I can't, because like I would I would have loved to get into like freestyle calisthenics. You know what I mean? A lot of the, the tricks, like the shrimp flips, the swing 360s. And I was starting to learn a few of them and like, get, I was enjoying it. But like now with this shoulder, it's like, it's still an ongoing thing where, it puts it in a very risky position and um yeah it just it's it's a lot of risk freestyle calisthenics for me so that's why i tend to stick to the more statics the safer kind of like you know elements of calisthenics and um it's a sacrifice but yeah it's just again that kind of demotivated me but there's you just got to look at the bright side just do what you can you know so let's say if you're injured right now you can't do anything upper body wise just focus on your legs or do some kind of stretching mobility, just do what you can really. So that's how I kind of keep motivation, motivated as well. Cool. So except the, the planche and the one arm handstand, what are your goals right now uh, in, in workout? Yeah. So um, again, I've been enjoying, like I said, I've been, I've been enjoying training my legs, bro. Like I, lo <laughs> I love leg training now. So again, <laughs> I just want to, I want to get to like um, a solid, like so a strong squat. So I will be happy with like a, a 140, 160 squat. I would love to do that. Again, I'm training towards it. So again, just, um, yeah, seeing, seeing improvements and again, just maybe to gain a little bit of weight as well, like just to look a little bigger, but I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much happy. Like I just want to maintain currently the skills and like really nail the full planche and one arm handstand, like have it down, like mastered. And then, um, yeah, we'll, we'll see from there if and any other skills, but yeah, those, I would say the, the main goals. Anyway. cool and uh, yeah let's talk a little about your youtube channel um where does the name abnormal beings come from <laughs> yeah man so um, if if you for those of you that don't know i started this channel with a friend called neville close friend of mine um known him for, for a long time and then literally we we're the we we both played football you know and again we wanted to kind of um share our progress through calisthenics and like we saw like a, a good amount of progress in, in a short period of time in a year And like back then, I think our first video was like in in April 2014. So it was wow. like a long, long time ago. So it's like Alice Calisthenics was still kind of underground, you know. And then I was like, oh, let's just let's just film this. Let's get like a little montage of clips. And so we threw that up on, on YouTube. And then like it kind of like went viral after like a couple couple months and stuff. And like and then people like and we we made an Instagram and then yeah, we gain some traction and then we're like oh shit this is this can actually work this is like a, a thing and then we just kept sharing our progress and like i guess we kind of stopped so i kind of stopped then we didn't really post continuously that was just the first video just to show progress and it was just kind of there on the side and then like when football didn't really work out for me and like i was st studying at university i studied accounting at university so um once i kind of like graduated everything's done football didn't really work out for me um i was like what can i do and i was like I really love fitness. I really love personal training. You know, I've always been active. I was like, and I've got this little YouTube channel that has like a small, small following. I was like, let me just post more often. So I started to make tutorials on calisthenics and stuff like that. And then the channel just started to grow and grow. And like, I did a lot of like hit workouts. So again, like just basic body weight workouts and stuff. And that, that exploded. There's always like one viral video that explodes your channel. So that kind of grew it. And then, yeah, just it started to kind of morph into like, oh, damn, this is like, I could actually make a career out of this. So yeah, just started to take it more seriously, PTing on the side and then merging the two until like now what it is now. So it's like, it's been a, it's kind of like, I never wanted to be a YouTuber or like, you know what I mean? Get into the YouTube game, but it just happened. Like, so it's, it's a very nice feeling, you know? And it's, I'm just, I just hope that I can kind of give advice to people because it was kind of hard as well when I first started to have that advice, if that makes sense, so. Yeah. definitely and then the, the name came from literally just abs thinking like abdominals and then I, I was like oh what's not what's cool and then we're like abnormal is not normal like we're a bit different you know we want to look like you know beasts freaks or whatever so we're like abnormal beings that's that's the name so. 
<laughs> wow, I, I didn't expect the the app thing. Like, uh, yeah, no, <laughs> it's so it's so silly. Just think of it as a kid. So we're like, oh yeah, we got have you know, just oh my god, this it's stupid, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah, That's but really nice. Cool. Congrats on that. Um, like, oh, uh, it, especially we uh, had like a lot of things, a lot of comments for your uh, original, um, original challenges. Like, especially the the challenges that people like. Um, that's something that uh, we uh, saw a lot of uh, times in the question sticker. So, yeah. Um, yeah, interesting. So, how does your week look like uh, as a as a YouTuber? So, and and personal trainer. Yeah, so usually I would have um, clients scheduled throughout the week. So right now I'm not uh, part of a gym. I just train people outdoors or at their houses. So I've got like mobile clients. So I've got like a, a good um, kind of like clientele that I know that's like uh, my clients. And then I'll train them throughout the week. And then um, I would always pick like one or two days where I just film content. So I've got a videographer. Uh, he comes, films me in the park or whenever, um, once or twice a week. And then we'll take stuff for like, instagram and for youtube so we'll just schedule one or two days um to do that i just get out of the way with and then i try and upload like every uh, every sunday or monday on a youtube video just to maintain consistency and then have like content throughout the week so i feel like that's a lot easier to manage and maintain and then um in between i might have so i've got like an online program right now so i've got like coaching clients so i'll, I'll make a couple calls um do a couple check-ins see how they're doing and stuff And yeah, that's literally how my, my week set up. So I have them in between my other clients and then, yeah, usually past like 7 p.m. I don't, I'm done. I'm just chilling. And then, yeah, to pass the time, I watch a lot of Netflix, just chill. Um, might play a little bit of Warzone, you know, just, that's just, <laughs> just how it is. So it's, it's very much chilled now. I have um, a lot more time as well to um, do certain things. And like, yeah, beginning to start to outsource certain things as well. So it's, it gives me more time. Uh, and freedom to to do other things as well so yeah cool who are your clients so if somebody's listening now uh, for who could it be interesting to do uh, online coaching or even like uh, coaching in, in london um so like anyone that's really into calisthenics a lot of my clients um want to get better at calisthenics skills so it's, it's a lot of focus on that and again the online program that i've, I've got is like very much for total beginner as well so if you're like a, a new to calisthenics or just someone that wants to get into it then it's a great program as well because it kind of give, builds you like um, a base, a nice base level um, where like you literally don't need to be able to do one single pull up. You can, you can start the program. So it's a nice kind of like guide for them to start calisthenics and get into it if you don't know anything about it. So I'll say it's that. And then also for someone that's a bit more advanced, you might want to as well check it out. A lot, a lot of home workouts in there. So I made it during lockdown. So because um, obviously a lot of people are struggling um, not knowing what to do. So it's like a good, if you don't have, if you don't, if you don't have a lot of equipment, if you need, if you literally just need a pull up bar and rings, if you're more advanced, you can get a good workout done through that program. So yeah, I would say it's, it's for that kind of, that's the client I really. Okay. Cool. So, um, yeah. Diet. Another uh, thing yes. that, uh, we received a lot of questions, um, Uh, is a uh, diet like nutrition mm. how how do you eat um how important do you think is is diet for your performance yeah very important like i can't like it's yeah it's a majority of the results like you need to you need to be on point with it if you want to especially for physique as well um and strength like you need to know what you're putting into your body and you want to have an idea so like um i've never really done huge bulking and cutting phases like throughout the years if you've if you've seen my physique i've never really like you know put on a massive amount of weight and then cut i've never really enjoyed that um i've never been one to do that um however i have maintained a certain um caloric like surplus or small small surplus throughout uh, and then drop it to a small deficit or something like that so i i would like have phases where i i would kind of like have a small bulk if that makes sense because If I, for, for, especially for calisthenics, if you're trying to learn all these skills, any weights that you put on, ex excessive weight, is going to make it a lot harder. Like you want to be as light as possible. So having like a low body fat percentage is just so, is so much advantageous to it, if that makes sense, like to learning any kind of skill. So I've always kind of tried to maintain a certain level of leanness. And then um, that has helped me with my skills, if that makes sense. So I just, like I'll say, usually right now I'm eating around 3,000 calories a day. So that's like um, almost like a maintenance level slash a slight kind of caloric surplus for me. Um, so that's, yeah, 3,000 calories roughly. And then certain days, 
let's say come now it's summertime as well and like, let's say you want to shred down a bit i'll drop it to maybe like 2500 to 2200 something like that where it's slightly less and then if you if i, I try to maintain it, i don't really track everything through my fitness pal but i have a rough idea if that makes sense as a pt i kind of like know you know certain foods and like calories and certain foods and amounts so if i were you if you if you if you'd have no idea at all, I would say just get like my fitness pal or any kind of calorie tracking app and actually just track what you're eating for a week. Cause you'll be surprised like certain foods, you know, have like, like look at oil, for example, one tablespoon is like 120 calories or something. A lot of people don't know this. So it's like, if you're cooking a lot of oily foods, fried foods, calories are going to, you know, skyrocket. So it's like those things you need to educate yourself on. Once you have that understanding, then you can kind of have an idea on what you're eating right now. And then you'll kind of like, for me, I always tell people just test it out. So test out a certain, if you don't know your calorie amount, it's like what to, in order to gain weight or lose weight, just test out. If you're eating, let's say 3000 calories every week and you're maintaining the same weight, then you know, you need to bump up your calories. Keep doing that. Track your weight throughout. If you've noticed you've gained weight, then you know, that's the number you need to eat at to, to gain weight, if that makes sense. So it's a bit of trial and error, but that's always worked for me, if that makes sense. And I've always like stayed in a slight surplus and then if i ever felt like i was gaining too much weight or i wanted to shred down i'd go i'd drop it to a deficit and again certain days like i said you i enjoy food so i might order a, a pizza or wings you know what i mean it don't matter like i'll eat unhealthy as well you ha it's, it's all you have to like um be consistent with it and you ha it has to be sustainable so you, it can't be something a diet can't be something where you're you're not looking forward to because you're not going to maintain it. So I always tell people, don't worry, man, like eat that slice of cake or something, just enjoy it. But at the same time, just know what you're taking in and like what you need to hit in order to achieve your goals. So that's it. Oh, cool. Um, a typical meal for you? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so usually um, every breakfast, Again, like I, I love pancakes, so I'll probably make some pancakes, so like oatmeal pancakes, like spelt flour, you know, make the pancakes, whatnot, maple syrup, blueberries, banana, whatever. That's I love that. Or oh. I'd have like a, a bowl of a bowl of oats, so porridge, maybe like um, 80 to 100 grams honey, you know, with I love um, coconut milk or like um, oat milk as well, almond milk as well. So I yeah, I just have that as for breakfast maybe, as an example. Then for lunch maybe like a tuna sandwich. So like a can of tuna, mayonnaise, you know, sweet corn, just like add different ingredients and just salad, just have it in like either a bagel or, a, you know, slice of toast, have some nuts on the side. If I want to bump up my calories, maybe some cashew nuts I love. So that would be another meal. Then I, I might have like a, in the afternoon, I might have like a shake. So I've got like a plant-based protein shake. I'll have that. So like extra bit of protein in my diet. And then, um, Let's say, for example, for, for lunch, I'll have maybe a bowl of pasta, some pasta. So again, pasta with a little bit of just like uh, red sauce or whatever. Um, dinner, I would have maybe like salmon. So like salmon fillets with sweet, sweet potato, um, greens, keep it nice and simple. And then dessert, oh, sorry, dinner, I, would, I might have some um, ch like chicken breast, chicken breast, rice, um, again, it's a bit, it's a bit of salad, and then I'll, I'll supplement again with like another shake, like a, a plant-based shake. And then for dessert, I might have like this is where I treat myself. I usually get like a little bit of some ice cream Oreos. I love the ice cream Oreo combo. Oh, I love it. So <laughs> ice creams Oreos, you know, um, pff, might have like a yogurt as well or something like that. So that's usually how I eat in a day. If that makes sense. But it's kind of like a lot of meals, four or five meals in a day. Um, and then, yeah, if I want to bump it up, I might include another meal, extra meal or something like that. You know what I mean? I'll just play around with that. But that's usually how I eat. So there's loads of videos on YouTube. If you check it out, I've got loads of four-day of eating videos so you can see how I eat. But yeah. Cool. <laughs> and uh, you always said plant-based uh, shake. Uh, what's the reason? Like at first I thought, oh, he's uh, like vegetarian or... Oh, um, no, no. I'm not. And then the tuna and the uh, <laughs> yeah, salmon <laughs> and chicken breast. <laughs> chicken breast. I was like, listen, I love my meat as well. I can't lie. I do. You know what it is? It's like, I don't, I try not to. So I'm trying to reduce my meat consumption again. One, because obviously environmental reasons and like just, I, I just know my body best. And I feel like um, having a little bit of meat in my diet, I, I just feel like I, I function the best at, if that makes sense. Like I've tried going vegan and um, I, I just, 
I, uh, maybe I need more time to adjust to it, but I just didn't feel like I was performing at my best. So that's why I included a little bit. Like most of my, I can't lie, most of my meals are plant-based in terms of like the, the carbs and everything, the rice, the pasta, the, you know what I mean? There's, I would say I just do have maybe like, again, the salmon or the chicken breast in there as well. So, and for me, the shakes, the reason why I do plant-based, again, just because I want to try and reduce my dairy consumption as well. Like I feel like whey as well. I, I might, I'm, I'm a little bit lactose intolerant. So I feel like, again, what, what doesn't react with my body it goes out, it goes out, I replace it. So having the plant-based shakes, I felt a lot more comfortable and better. Does that make sense? My body felt yeah. a lot better. So it's also a lot of testing for you, just uh, testing and feeling what your body wants and whatnot. Exactly. Like for me, I can't say to someone, oh, try the plant-based one. You know, some person might find the way one, they, they perform better or function. So like everyone's different, just experiment. That's my, my best opinion to people. Experiment, what works for you, do it. Right. Yeah. Cool. Really nice. We are coming to an end of the interview. Uh, we always have some quick questions, quick answers at the end of every yeah, interview. Sure. Favorite food? Favorite food? Ooh. Uh, I'm going to say rice, peas, jerk chicken. So it's like, or jollof rice and chicken. It's like a Nigerian dish, jollof rice and chicken. Done. So yeah, okay. I'm half Nigerian, so it's got to stick to the roots. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's it. Are you a dog or a cat person? Uh, dog person, all day, dog. Okay. Yeah. Dog cool. person. Uh, what's your favorite color? Green. Green's Green. my favorite color. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> uh, what are the athletes that in inspire you? So many, man. So many. There's oh, there's just too many, bro. There's so many in the, in the UK and around the world. Like, it's, to list all of them, it, uh, yeah, it's, it's hard. Like, you got the likes of, obviously, Eric Ortiz. You got, um, you know... Small Spartan, you know, in the UK, you got, you got, um, Daniel Lies and you got, you got so many beasts out there. You got, oh, there's, there's so many Victor Cameron. Oh my God. There's just so many crazy people. I can't, I would love to say so many different names, but it's just, you know what I mean? It's, it's hard. So anyone that does calisthenics for me is like an idol because like, I know what they're going through. I know their journey and I respect them. So do you get me? Like anyone that's a, a calisthenics athlete really does. Yeah. Oh, that's a good answer. <laughs> yeah. to keep, keep it civil. <laughs> uh, what's your favorite skill? Favorite skill, planche. Just because of how long it took. So planche, yeah. Pull or push? I'm push. <laughs> I'm team push. Team push. <laughs> I love push. Really? Even though yeah. like your, your pull is so strong. Yeah, I love... Mate, I'm pull. I don't know why. I'm just like bored. <laughs> I won't push. I won't push. <laughs> Fighting your genetics. Yeah, man. I, oh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but cool. Uh, favorite book? Oh, that's a good one. Um, uh, don't Hurt Me, I think. David Goggins' book. That's a really yes. good one. Or Can't Hurt Me, I can't remember what it's called. Can't it's Hurt Me. Can't Hurt Me, that's the one, yeah. yeah. Great book. Nice. Um... Favorite music genre, genre. You maybe you can tell me how, how to pronounce it. I just know the, <laughs> the French word genre. Yeah, genre. Yeah, genre. Okay. I say okay. genre. So um, okay, cool. I would say like rap, rap, R and B, rap. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the best calisthenics event you've visited. Oh, the best one. Um, I haven't been to too many. You know, I've been to. I would love to do more. Obviously, with COVID, in it, it's hard. Um, it's the event I've been to. I haven't really been to. I haven't really been to anyone. Like I've been to one in. Uh, there was one in Sweden. I went to. It was like a fitness festival. That was mm -hmm. quite sick. And there was like a calisthenics competition going on. So I'll say that one there. That was that was sick. When was it? Ah, uh, I think a year or two ago. In, in two December. Ago. Uh yeah, I think it was that one. I think it was that one. I, we were there as well. Uh, How I'm is just, it? Like uh, where um, Simon, the the underdog from from Sweden, won the freestyle competition against Tom and Dan Rosenberg. I think so. Yeah, I think yeah. so. 
I think so. Yeah, that's that insane one. that we didn't meet you immediately. Yeah, other. I know, I know. I was there for a bit. Yeah, so it was it was sick. I loved yeah. it. I thought it was there. Yeah. yeah. So shout out to Daniel Fairfield who organized this. Uh, yeah, it was, it was his work and his uh, like first big competition. I think that he organized. So. Yeah, I saw I saw him there and I spoke to him for a bit. So he's he's really cool, man. Yeah. Uh, we've been chatting on Instagram as well. So yeah, he's he's cool guy, man. He's yeah, cool guy. He is. Shout out to shout out. <laughs> Shout out, <laughs> <laughs> awesome um yeah and the last question always what's your message to the calisthenics community what's something that you want to tell the listeners um just enjoy it man trust the process and and enjoy your training because like we're all gonna get there we're all gonna get there enjoy the journey you know your, whatever your goals is you're gonna achieve it so just just trust the process and enjoy it man that's that's my best advice and like yeah let's just all learn and grow together and hopefully we achieve all the goals we want. So yeah, that's my message. <laughs> awesome. Thanks for the interview. We're coming to an end. And uh, before you can say goodbye to, to the listeners and you have the last word, I want to say thank you to everyone listening to this. Uh, I forgot one question. How can people get in touch with you? How can they uh, contact you best? Best thing you can do is um, Instagram DM me. So at abnormal underscore beings, because like I do, I'm still quite active on Instagram. I, I reply to a lot of DMs. So if you just message me there or you can email me abnormal.beings at dreamer.com and yeah, you can contact me there. Cool. We will put all the links in the description to your Instagram, YouTube and email address. Um, yeah, as I said, we're coming to an end. Thanks to everyone listening to this till the end. It's always a big pleasure if somebody takes the, the time to listen to such an interview to the end. So a big thank you if you stuck with us uh, until now. If you want to support the, the series, give it a thumbs up. It always helps for the algorithm. I think you know, <laughs> tell you. And uh, yeah, you have like the that. last words and can say <laughs> goodbye. Big thanks again from my side for your time. No, Philip, I appreciate it. Thank you for having me on this. Um, it's been a pleasure and hopefully I answered each and every one of your questions. But yeah, no, really amazing interview and so glad to be a part of it. So thank you guys and yeah, take it easy, bro.